you must remember that it's a very new kind of pv project not many places in the world or in fact no places in the world build solar projects at such altitudes and in such conditions look so switzerland is already in a very uh, lucky situation when it comes to its electricity uh, supply because it has lots of hydropower and uh, can trade electricity with neighboring countries uh, when needed now of course the question is what happens in 2035 for example if we have a complete nuclear power phase out and we want to still achieve this target of at least 17 terawatt hours of new renewable electricity and in the sweet edge project we had three modeling teams from the university of geneva eth zurich and epfl who uh, analyzed these kinds of uh, scenarios for for switzerland and here you can see the um, electricity supply mix in 2035, assuming that there would be 61.2 terawatt hours of uh, electricity demand per year. And we would reach this target of 17 terawatt hours of new renewable electricity. And here what it shows, so of course, that there's something in common between the three models. So there's lots of uh, hydro uh, power, of course. But also solar photovoltaic here in yellow is a big, big uh, player. And so is the net uh, electricity import. And then for the rest, there's uh, some flexibilities to what extent biomass is used or wind power or, um, or even some small quantities of, of natural gas. So in other words, uh, solar photovoltaic is a big player. Now it is to some extent flexible, whether it's concentrated uh, more in the alpine areas where it's more efficient or it's spread throughout the country on built infrastructures and, and rooftops. Um, but what Switzerland cannot do, it cannot say um, uh, no to everything. So, for example, after nuclear power phase out, it cannot say no to wind power, no to alpine solar. Uh, photovoltaic, no to um, net import, etc., etc. Well, Alpine PV has a lot of advantages uh, compared to lowland PV. There is, in, in general, there is uh, much more radiation up there. This is simply because you're closer to the sun. In the specific uh, settings of a lot of the mountain ranges in the world, there's also much less uh, winter clouds. And therefore, if you put uh, high alpine PV panels, you get overall much more radiation to deal with. This is even enhanced by the snow cover if present, because the snow cover reflects a lot of the radiation and the panels get the chance to harvest this additional radiation quite effectively. And there is also the temperature effect, the lower the temperature, the higher the efficiency of the panels. Overall, if we try to look now for Switzerland, where we would put solar panels uh, to get an optimal uh, supply of energy, especially also in the wintertime, then what we see on the map is that uh, the mountains are there predominantly um, covered by uh, potential sites with uh, solar installations, and very few of them will end up in the lowlands. So this is why we think that, uh, especially for Switzerland, high alpine PV is a great opportunity. First, what does a PV project look like? Every PV project needs three steps, essentially. First, you need to do site selection. You need to do pick a site smartly. You need to then actually design your solar installation, the orientation, uh, the number of panels and what geometry they are placed. And then uh, you need to think of how do you actually go ahead and build it. So that's generic for all PV projects. Now, Alpine PV is, as we know, a new niche. It's a very good source of electricity for Switzerland. But in each of these three steps, we have new challenges, especially in Switzerland. Now, site selection, let's begin with that. You're dealing with sites that are in high altitude. Um, uh, you have to think about accessibility for construction and also for the electricity grid. You have to think about uh, a lot of the environmental regulations that Switzerland has in place for protecting land. 
So site selection is challenging. Design is challenging because you have to think about radiation in complex terrain. You have to think about the presence of snow that has reflective properties. Those are great, but that increases the complexity of the design process itself. And finally, construction itself is kind of challenging. At high altitudes above, let's say 2000 meters, you only have probably a few months of the year where you can actually build something. So your construction schedules are highly, uh, are quite tight and quite squeezed. So Alpine PV is great. It is a very promising source of electricity, but you need to be very smart and you need very specialized tools to actually execute these projects. And that's where we come in as a startup or as a spin-off, Sunwell, that we are building these tools that help accelerate Alpine PV development. Moodze is uh, the first utility scale Alpine PV power plant uh, that is located in uh, Canton Glaus. Um, and actually it's more or less the, my big laboratory. So I use the data that uh, the monitoring system there produces um, to um, uh, do my research. And uh, as you can see on this image, uh, one part of my research is the accumulation around and um, on solar panels, as well as how it um, transports on and around. So if it slides off or if it melts or if uh, it's blown by, by wind, um, that's an important process because um, it may bury solar panels uh, and it may also damage them. Um, then the second part of my study uh, of my research is um, the modeling of the total irradiation that um, impinges uh, the solar panel plane. Um, on the images, on the image that you can see now that I took last week uh, with my phone placed parallel to the solar panel, you can actually see what a solar panel placed there um, can see uh, around him. Or you can see that's half of, of what he sees is sky, uh, in which you have uh, blue sky, but also some clouds. And the other half is actually terrain, uh, which is covered uh, in snow. Well, generally, it is important to note that renewable energy infrastructure is largely a cantonal and even a municipal responsibility. And this means, as in all these federalist areas, we observe important fragmentation between the cantons. And when we look at Alpine PV more specifically, which is a, a particular case of open space PV, we observe that this variation also concerns the Alpine cantons. For example, the canton of Uri states in its uh, planning, the Richtplan, that the canton generally refrains from using open space PV. So there it's really difficult to go for these kind of installations. Conversely, the canton of Valais more strongly considers Alpine PV and even promotes this type of PV. In particular, the cantonal parliament has recently decided to change uh, the regulations in order to accelerate the permission processes. Now we have some kind of a new player in the room with the federal parliament who has decided to go for its solar offensive, as it is called, um, which includes um, to more strongly facilitate and even promote Alpine PV. So um, there will be a particular funding or a subsidy for all those Alpine PV plants that provide electricity to the grid um, until the end of 2025. And it will be interesting to see how this cantonal variation and this new subsidy scheme at the national level um, interact and, and lead to maybe stronger deployment of Alpine PV in Switzerland. I guess it will not be that easy. Um, as you can see in this graph, this first graph, PV on buildings are the most popular energy source that we have in Switzerland, and, and that's, that's well known. But we also observe 
that open space PV has much lower support rates and actually it's even slightly behind the wind. Um, when we investigated whether the acceptance of this energy source and these projects differs between regions, for example, between people living in the Alpine areas compared to those living in the Midlands, we see, and this is shown in, in the second graph, no substantial differences. So it's not that uh, only Alpine people would reject or oppose these projects, but it's really across all Switzerland that we observe the similar patterns. And if we delve deeper into the details of these projects, we see that generally they are accepted, they are considered to be useful, but it largely depends on where exactly they are sited and also likely how big they are. We um, also investigated how um, people rated different types of PV projects, including those projects placed in the Alps. In our case, the, they were placed in skiing regions. And we clearly found that PV projects placed in these alpine areas are least accepted, much less accepted than those placed, for example, um, close to traffic infrastructure or on community buildings. And again, there was no substantial differences between people living in the Alps and those living in the Midlands or in more urban areas. So first of all, it's important to understand that there are different type of Alpine PV projects and they cost differently. Uh, the currently constructed projects are either wall mounted on dams of hydro dams or on lakes. The wall mounted projects under the current uh, openly available information cost between 2,500 and 3,300 francs per kilowatt, while the lake projects, the one that has been constructed, costs around 5,300 francs per kilowatt approximately. We do not know the current costs for ground-mounted PV. However, uh, based on the interviews that we had, they vary uh, between 2,000 uh, to 3,000 or even 4,000 francs per kilowatt. So the variation is really big and depends on the exact locations these projects will be located on. The profitability and the financing of these projects uh, really depends then on the way that they sell their electricity. So we looked at three channels of selling electricity. One is for utility electricity prices. Uh, that you also uh, that they charge their consumers. Uh, second one is the power purchase uh, a power purchase agreement with a corporate buyer, and then the third one is selling electricity on the open market. Uh, out of these three, and out of the three project types that I described earlier, we can see that under the current investment scheme, which offers a sixty percent investment subsidy uh, of the investment costs ground-mounted uh, PV projects uh, would uh, be profitable if they sell electricity at the local utility tariffs or for a power purchase agreement price, uh, which we assume to be uh, around uh, between 90 and 100 francs uh, per uh, megawatt hour based on the current prices that we see uh, on the market. The wall-mounted projects and the late mounted projects would, uh, at the current conditions, uh, not be as profitable um, simply because their costs uh, are at the moment too, um, too high. We need to work out the issue of social acceptance and especially not in a simplistic way, but really taking the perspective of the whole mix of electricity supply technologies in, in Switzerland. Because it's easy to say no to alpine PV, no to wind power, no to import, uh, etc. But in reality, what we need is really a more balanced uh, consensus view of what is socially acceptable and yet still technically uh, feasible. We have now realized that the potential is great. Now we need to get some um, larger scale production size up and going and preferably close to existing infrastructure such that we don't uh, ruin pristine landscapes. This is possible and we need to get going by teaming up with uh, small scale of businesses and industries. I think the Swiss policymakers uh, have been 
really uh, uh, positive in supporting Alpine PV projects, but I think they can do more. Uh, one thing that we have heard repeatedly is that the deadline for the first stage of projects, which is 2025, needs to be extended. There's simply not enough time to build the assets that can be built within that time frame. And the second thing that the policymakers can do is really streamline the process of document preparation and document submission for projects. This will help project developers a lot in streamlining their workflows and speeding up the project development. I think we need to um, bring um, the um, Alpine PV models that are developed in the research into the industry. And that's what uh, my project's partners are actually doing uh, pretty well. I think it's really important to inform the population and discuss with people why this form of PV is needed. And related to that, I guess it could be helpful to more specifically discuss and clarify where these uh, projects shall be cited in order to avoid fears that basically the nice alpine area will all be um, covered by PV plants, which clearly is not the case. We are currently still uncertain about the exact costs of ground-mounted Alpine PV. We will know what the costs are when uh, they really get constructed. Um, then we will know if the current levels of uh, government subsidies are enough to stimulate these projects. It's great that we currently have these subsidies, but also government should maybe think about introducing other subsidy schemes that are similar to the ones that we have in other countries, which provide projects with the long-term revenue stability. Thank you.